what we need what we need our children don't ask us for what we supply them with we know what is good for them and we offer it to them it's up to them to accept it or to reject it in the same way we don't go to the father and indicate to him what we require Luke chapter 18 and verse 18 and 19 Luke chapter 18 verse 18 and 19 and a certain ruler asked him saying good master what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, responding to good master, said, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one that is God. By his own mouth. Why is it that when Jesus is Speaking in parables and shadows everyone holds on to the shadows but when Jesus begins to speak the truth when he begins to speak the truth about a real existence of himself when he's speaking the truth not in shadows then why is it that no one holds on to what he says what was asked of him by the ruler was what shall I do to inherit eternal life good master calling him Agathos and he said no one is Agathos constitutionally good and beneficial under any circumstances except God that is what Jesus says that should be sufficient for you in technical terms the physical expression the teaching the physical word of the teacher that is led by Christ is not constitutionally good even though it is potentially good and led by Christ because it is not of the spiritual nature even though it reflects and shadows a spiritual work of Christ of the age of the spiritual creation why is this important to know it is important to know so that you can understand that the physical teaching does not benefit you it does not benefit you in its own expression the spiritual work of the Rim Age is constitutionally good. It is of Christ and of the spiritual nature and in the eternal realm. But the physical manifestation of that work is not constitutionally good. Who is still here? The shadow may become good depending on your circumstances. If you have access to the work that it shadows it only becomes potentially good if you have access to what it shadows in the eternal realm in and of itself the physical teaching is of no value absolutely Matthew 5 and 16 
Let your light, let your force so shine before men that they may see your callous works, your good works. Constitutionally good and potentially good and glorify your Father which is in heaven. For speaks of the communication of a spiritual work. It is a spiritual communication. Therefore, reference is not to the physical expression itself. There is no reference in this verse to the physical teaching, to the physical words, but only to the spiritual work that the physical expression shadows first does not speak of a physical work and Kalos referred to in the verse speaks of the same communication of the spiritual work that exists in the eternal realm others can have access to the eternal realm if they are submissive to Christ and to Christ alone and can therefore see the spiritual work shadowed in the physical word or work. The good works referred to in Matthew 5.16 can in no way refer to our physical work even if it is led by Christ. To come back to the original question, can a physical work be potentially good? Yes, as long as it is based on a work in the eternal realm, having had the work declared to us by Christ. As long as a work is led by Christ, it is good potentially and must be considered as being for the benefit of the hearer or reader. This is where all Christian works are classified by God. We must have the utmost respect for the Bible and for all physical works that are led by Christ, which we must be able to discern according to Christ. We can judge all works if we are submissive to Christ because we have access to the eternal realm and if a work or word does not inspire us, then it is clear it is not in existence in the eternal realm and therefore it is not of God. I'd like us to go to 2 Corinthians, please. Six seventeen. dealing with the second part of the verse where it says touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you touch not the unclean thing First, what is the image of God breathing the breath of life into us, having made us out of the dust of the earth, of breathing the breath of life into dirt? We know that the primary reality is of God breathing the breath of life or the spirit of life or the glory into the original spiritual creation as Christ emerges from the age of spiritual creation into the age of glory. That it is one of Christ bringing what he created to life by emerging into the age of glory with us as an integral part of himself. A second reality shadowed by this image is of us being planted in the material creation of him sending us 
of breathing us into the material creation of taking of his nature us his spiritual creation and sending us making us translated downgrading us into the physical realm downgrading us to the physical condition from the spiritual condition so that we can be proved in something that God guarantees we will not fail because he backs us up with a spiritual connection and the possibility of being connected to the original spiritual creation which exists in the eternal realm in a fixed state, place, relationship and expectancy looking first at the Greek that was translated as touch not the unclean thing if you look at 680 in Strong's it says Haptomahi very quickly if you can not is main Greek 3361 and the last word that we want to study is the word that was translated as unclean Akath Artos 169 in Strong's please from I as a negative particle and a presumed derivative of 2508 meaning cleansed so when you put the two together it means not cleansed who's here check 2508 To cleanse or heal and the negative of that would be not cleansed or not healed then if you go to 681 once again it says haptomahi which is to attach oneself to from hapto to fasten to it really is not touch but to attach oneself to to fasten to with the Greek word me meaning not related to haptomahi so therefore it says not to become attached to do not fasten yourself to or not to not to be stuck in and the first word we studied was akarth artos so therefore when you put everything together it says do not become stuck or fastened to do not become attached to do not attach oneself to the unhealed or the uncleansed condition the physical condition it's not touch not the unclean thing it says do not become stuck do not become fastened do not become attached to the unclean condition we are the unclean thing 
it's not about staying away from the unclean thing as if the unclean thing was something outside of us Paul lets us know that we are the unclean condition and that we need to stay away from it it's a gross mistranslation of the original Greek we need Christ for deliverance from this bondage from being shackled to the unclean the unhealed condition that we naturally find ourselves in it's this condition that we need to be relieved of by submission to Jesus Christ what is assumed by Paul what is assumed that we understand is that we must allow Christ to break our being stuck in the physical condition by the spiritual connection do not remain in the physical condition for the rest of your lives but allow Christ to deliver you from that condition repeatedly so that you won't be stuck in that condition that is unhealed and where it says be separate if you check the Greek word aphorizo which speaks of to set off by boundary limit exclude and appoint that we be in the spiritual ages that we experience God's world the eternal realm that we experience the original spiritual creation thereby separating ourselves out of the physical realm putting ourselves in a place where we'll, we will be out of bounds of the operation of the oppression of this world why is it important for us not to be fastened to the physical condition because this is what is not acceptable to God that we continue to remain unchanged in our physical condition this is the unforgivable sin that we spend our entire lives not seeking Christ not submitting to Jesus Christ and being stuck in the unclean or the unhealed condition if we remain attached to this physical condition if we wait until we are saved to be delivered it will never happen if you wait to the end of your life for God to save you you will never know the deliverance of God and you will be damned eternally why? because no flesh nothing that exists in this physical realm can boast in the presence of God 1 Corinthians 1.29 which says no flesh can glory in his presence it's our glorious boast we cannot come before God and boast that it is by our own works that we were delivered it is because of him that we can experience deliverance it is only because of his works and our spiritual connection to these spiritual works implemented before the material creation that we can experience deliverance Amen. and liberation and in this we have absolutely nothing to boast about it is all because of Christ and his works that we can come before God it is only because Christ prepares us and makes us fit to come before the Father that we can come before his vision Romans 7.25 where it says I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then What does he thank God for? 
that everything has been finished before the physical creation because we can do the works that are necessary to deliver us and to save us and to liberate us everything was done beforehand and all we have to do is receive what was done beforehand this takes an attitude that recognizes it takes an attitude an approach to God that recognizes that we are unclean that we are unhealed in our natural condition I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord for fixing everything up in advance of our lives so then with the mind I serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin when I'm walking in my own capacity when I'm relying on my own natural resources I'm serving the law of sin and death I am not liberated I remain in the restriction of the physical realm where nothing is good according to God's definition and if we want to be part of of God we have to submit to the system that he prepared in advance for our own deliverance the question is what it does it mean when it says with the flesh I myself serve the law of sin it's indicating that it is not of works it is not of learning it is not of knowledge that it is not of the word but of an experience with Jesus Christ and of the original spiritual creation it's not what you know with the carnal mind it's what you experience with the heart it's not what you do with your body because the carnal existence only decides what gratifies and glorifies the flesh even in ministry if you're in the physical condition you will make choices that inflate and glorify the flesh I'm speaking of ministry to appear like you're the one who can save you're stuck in making choices that your own carnal mind presents to you this is one of the major problems with believing you believe what your carnal mind says you should believe the choice of what you believe will be determined by your carnal mind and your carnal mind is restricted to the physical realm where nothing is profitable the options open to the carnal mind are all of a carnal physical nature the options available to you with the carnal mind are restricted to the things that the carnal mind can function in and you're restricted away from the possibility of ever getting close to what we should experience in the eternal realm you're restricted away from what God wants us to believe him for we're restricted away from what God wants us to implement in our own lives the choices you have when you are in the carnal mind will have nothing to do with God's will are you still here? Amen. why did it say that it's with the mind I serve the law of God looking at the word Nusi you will come to understand that it's not really the mind but it's the heart 
It's the spirit. What I'm saying to you is, if it is with the spirit that I serve God, if it is with the spirit that I become a slave, a servant of God, where God rules with a fist of iron, then my heart must be changed. My heart must be changed from a physical consciousness to that of a consciousness of the eternal realm. For God to write His laws in my heart, my mind and my heart must be changed. It's about being at peace with God because we have been liberated from a restriction to this physical universe because we have been liberated from the physical condition because we have submitted to the living God the risen Christ, the eternal spirit in fact because our will has been supplanted by the will of God because, the work, because of the work of Jesus Christ this is all we have to do to please God it's submit to Christ allow Christ to connect us to his spiritual works of the Rima age this is all God wants that we submit our heart to Christ so that we can be liberated from the physical condition by the experience of the original spiritual creation where it says in Romans 8.2 the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has liberated me from the law of sin and death it says so because when we submit to the declaration in Jesus Christ I am liberated from the physical condition which says that I have no access into the eternal realm and therefore I am under the full operation of the lust of the flesh Romans 7 8 the physical condition worked fully all lusts for us to untangle ourselves from the shackles of the physical condition I must see Christ and when he reveals himself to me as a gift I must submit to what he shows me if you remain in your physical condition you will walk fully every loss that there is there will be nothing that will be too evil or hurtful for you the law of God is this law if I submit to Christ to the declaration then I will be set free from the physical condition because I will be spiritually connected to the original spiritual creation which allows me access to the Father who has my healing and this is what God wants this is the, the law of God referred to in Romans 7 25 and referred again to in Romans 8 2 as the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus It is all Christ's work and it is he who connects us to that work it is his work the work that is constitutionally good under any circumstances that we need access to the problem is that we have to come before it we have to be spiritually connected to it by submission to what Jesus Christ shows us it is his work therefore we have to accept his substitution in our place because we cannot do the work that is required of us for us to become acceptable to the Father to God we have to accept his substitution even as some accept 
their substitution by Christ on the cross, we need to accept God's substitution in our place as He shed His glory to create us spiritually. We have to accept the fact that we cannot do the work that is required of us and that Christ is the one who is able to do this work. It is His work and we have to submit to this work. Then and only then will we be connected to this work so as to experience it. The experience of the spiritual work gives us access to the work that we cannot do. Access to who we are in Jesus Christ and access to Christ and access to the Father. In this we become liberated from the physical condition. Our thinking and our heart is changed. This is how we serve the law of God. The law of God is just for our benefit, not for God's benefit. This is how we become a slave to the law of God. By submitting to the declaration, by accepting Christ's substitution on our behalf. Romans 7.25 is all about becoming a slave to the law of life. The law of God is equal to the law of life. To be addicted to the abundant life. Romans 7.25 sounds as if it's about us serving God. But in truth, it is not about us serving God. It is about God serving us. It's about becoming a slave to the glory, about becoming addicted to the glory of God. That we become addicted to our own liberation in Jesus Christ. It is as if our own ignorance has us bewitched. It is not that God wants us to serve Him. Which is how we should really understand 725. But about God serving us. It's about letting God do for us what liberates us. It's about allowing God to work in our lives. To lift us up to a level of existence that we don't know, that we're not familiar with. Therefore, we are afraid to let go of the controls. It's all about allowing Christ to take us to that level of existence. What God wants is that we live up to the expectation of His conception that we become righteous. This is how we serve the law of God. To submit to the declaration in our hearts so that we are spiritually connected to the single Rima work and to the original spiritual creation thereby experiencing our healing. Our becoming the original spiritual creation temporarily, which is righteousness, which is being in the condition that allows us to approach the Father for our healing. What is required is submission. That is all that is required of us. This is the work that God wants, that we accept and submit to Christ's works. There is nothing that we can do to become acceptable to God. It is submission. This is what Romans 7.25 says. And this submission will yield a spiritual connection. And the spiritual connection will result in a physical expression. We don't 
do the work and then become acceptable it is because we submit and are spiritually connected that the work ensues that the work follows all it takes is the mind or the heart the spirit in effect to serve the law of God we don't need the body and our physical works to serve because the physical work does not serve God nor the law of God all it takes is our submission to the declaration for us to be spiritually connected to the spiritual works of the Rima age this serves the law of God what God wants is that we be selfish in our choices in as far as our salvation and deliverance is concerned he doesn't want us to serve him he wants us to serve our best interests by submitting to Jesus Christ because our best interests are realized in submission I am liberated because I am spiritually connected to Christ having been persuaded to conform to what Christ shows me having been persuaded to allow myself to be spiritually connected to the specific spiritual work that Christ declares to me All that's needed is submission this is what gives me access to my liberation submission to works that exist not in the physical realm but in the eternal realm this changes my condition from the spiritual one to the spiritual condition Matthew 5.16 indicates to us that it is the spiritual works that is callous that is potentially beneficial to others it is the spiritual works that are constitutionally good this is what Matthew 5.16 says to us outside of a spiritual connection looking again at Matthew 7.11 5.16 can only be possible when we submit to Jesus Christ and are spiritually connected to a spiritual work the result of that is a physical expression the works that are referred to in Matthew 5 16 are not the physical works but the spiritual works that are false that are communicated in a spiritual communication this is only possible when we submit to the declaration that Jesus Christ shows us outside of the spiritual connection that results from submission to the declaration we are in a state of poneros of being evil 
are harmful to those that are around us. And we need to come out of that. Luke 18, the words of Jesus Christ himself indicating to us that only God, only God is Agathos. Who's still here? Matthew 13. And 24. Outside of a spiritual connection, we are poneros. When we exist in the spiritual connection, we are spiritually connected to the single Rima rock and to the original spiritual creation which only abides in the eternal realm. Therefore, since Jesus refers to us as poneros outside of the spiritual connection and also since he refers to the fact of the planting of good seed in the physical creation it should be very obvious to us that what is referred to as Kalos is not the physical existence but rather our essence as we abide in Jesus Christ in the eternal realm. I'd like to close in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 the word that was translated as person is really the foundation or the support and sustaining all people by the Rima in the middle section of Hebrews 1 3 that we need to be sustained in the way of the Lord by the Rima by our connection to the single Rima works of the age of spiritual creation so that we would have access to the original spiritual creation ushering us to approach the Father so that we can experience deliverance and healing from the glory of God note that it says by the Rima what is implied is that it is the glory 
referred to in the first part of the verse that we are really after and that really sustains us in the assigned way in the assigned course and why is it important that we be sustained in the assigned course it's important so that we can sustain and maintain the essence of the eternal realm in us and present it to others as an alternative way of life which is better than the one that you live now we need to have continual access to the eternal realm so that we can sustain the works of the eternal realm in us by the Spirit of God in order for us to present to you another way of life another way of thinking but if we cannot maintain if we cannot sustain the works of the eternal realm of God's world in us we would not be able to offer you a true and a real and a tangible alternative to the way that you live presently for me to present you with this alternative way of thinking the alternative way of life and this alternative mode of operation I must maintain these works in my heart and in my mind so that it becomes a viable a real alternative in your own lives there is absolutely nothing else that I can teach you to persuade you to see Christ I passed that mark many years ago there's nothing in as far as teaching is concerned that you need to know to encourage you to leave your own way of life and embrace Christ there's nothing else that I can say to persuade you in your own carnal mind to leave the way of life that you're in right now and embrace this alternative way that Christ is presenting to us in the Bible the physical words cannot truly persuade you but you know enough in as far as carnal physical teachings are concerned to indicate to spark some sort of interest in your heart that would propel you towards the eternal realm there is nothing else that I can add to what I have already said to convince you to follow Jesus Christ everything has already been said in as far as that issue is concerned the rest is up to you it's all in a decision and the anxiety in this world is not going to get any less the levels of anxiety is going to be raised higher and higher by the oppression that is around us and that is mounting it's not going to get any easier it's going to get more difficult and what I'm recommending to you
is that you truly see Christ. Because Jesus said, not in shadows, in a reality, he said, if you see me truly, you will find me. And if you haven't found him, it's because you really haven't sought him. And I would like to encourage you today that no matter what the cost to you may be, it is the glory that keeps me going on, that keeps me seeking Christ again and again, that allows me, that propels me into the direction of the completion of my own assigned course despite of difficulties and opposition and hostility we must keep going because we truly fail when we give up and when things happen in the church we get discouraged Things discourage us. Things that happen in this world tend to discourage us. What encourages us is Christ Jesus and the access that he allows us in the last age of glory. Because what I'm saying to you this morning, the bottom line of what I'm saying to you at risk of my own person is that Jesus says he is not the one who delivers he is not the one who saves he is not the one who heals he is not the one who delivers but he is the one who takes us to the one who delivers which is God the Father. That is why he said, Why do you call me Agathos? Because I am not in my physical person the one that you need. You need to have your eyes open to the glory that I represent in the eternal realm by your access through submission. It is our teaching, it is the teaching of the church that says that it is the Father who heals and the only access to the Father is through Jesus Christ. That is what the Bible teaches, that we access healing through the Son, Jesus Christ who we have come to understand is God without his glory and that he shed that glory so that he could guarantee our deliverance and salvation once we are planted in the physical universe by our submission to what he showed us I need to underline this fact that we understand it is not Christ who saves but Christ who delivers us to the Father so that the Father can heal us so that the Father can deliver us recognizing that Christ is God without his glory that the son and the father are one person that we believe that that we have experienced it that everything in the scripture points to that fact that they are one and the same but we have to recognize that healing and deliverance does not come from the physical Jesus Moreover, 
that deliverance and healing does not come from the spiritual Christ but the spiritual Christ who abides in the eternal realm is the one that we must submit to because he is the same as God and he is the one who takes us to approach the Father as he connects us to the original spiritual creation according to his own conception we need to mature to these levels of understanding and knowledge and we are not to be ashamed of this knowledge that the Lord has given to us that is present in the teaching on Haima the blood because in it is revealed the reality that the New Testament is not a section of the Bible but is rather the system or the arrangement prepared before the material creation to guarantee our deliverance from this physical creation in it we have learned that grace is God's influence on us in the system called the New Testament that transforms our condition to the full extent from the physical condition to the spiritual condition enabling us to be liberated in fulfillment in God all these facts are laid out very plainly in the Bible for us to prove ourselves but if you are lazy and if you're not willing to search the scriptures yourself if you're willing to give God only two hours Sunday morning you will not come to a full understanding nor the full application of what this means in your own life and what I'm teaching is full application not partial application but full application of what we teach in the church in your own lives so that you have the same fulfillment and satisfaction that I have which the world cannot offer you no matter how much money you accumulate in your life let us be wise and accumulate what gives us true fulfillment in the treasures of heaven let us build not a material empire which we are going to leave behind but rather let us build our spiritual treasures which are based on the existence of the original spiritual creation by the Rima rocks that is what we seek to accumulate being wise let us not seek after things that we're going to leave behind when we die let us not build a physical church rather let us build together according to God's plan the body of Christ that only abides in the eternal realm which all of us should have access to even now let us leave our desire for a physical church for a physical